The following year, I began my new school career at Fells Junior Public High School. It's a dream come true for every hoodlum expelled from a parochial school. What freedom? No white shirts, neckties, nuns, priests, and no hun. On my first day, I had to sit through a lecture from the principal, Mr. Kaufman. He emphasized that he had a zero tolerance for any type of misbehavior at his school. He took me down the corridor to another office and introduced me to my counselor, Dr. Powell, who was some kind of head shrink. I had to report to him once a week. By now, I knew when it came to book savvy, I was definitely handicapped. But when it came to head games, I could hold my own and then some. After all, I'd been playing them for the last nine years with nuns and priests. I had fared fairly well at St. Martin's considering they didn't want to hear any excuses. It was their way, or the highway. During my first days at Fells Junior High, I couldn't believe how disorganized this school was. It was a zoo. Students running through the corridors and shooting down the stairways like uncaged monkeys. I thought to myself, what could I possibly learn in this madhouse? It looked to me that discipline was definitely not one of their strong points. This should have been easy pickings, but it wasn't as easy as I thought. Back in St. Martin's, you stayed in one classroom all day. At Fells, we jumped from class to class. It took me over a week to find my classes and remember my locker combination. Of course, I immediately hooked up with the wrong crowd, most of whom were ex-veterans of other parochial schools. But the real wackos were the ones brought up through the public school system. Now I was in with the real heavyweights. I'm talking about major crimes, from car theft to house robberies, huffing glue, drinking Robitussin cough medicine before and after school. For the first time, I was way out of my league. The crimes I committed at St. Martin's wouldn't even make honorable mention at Fells. All of my friends were Gentiles, but the school was primarily Jewish. We ran the joint. Most of the Jews were terrified of us, but there were exceptions. One day I was on my way home from school and there was a gang of my new friends picking on some Jewish kids. This one kid in our gang was called The Beast. He had a reputation of being the toughest kid in Fells. He was bullying this Jewish kid trying to lure him into a fight. The kid was in my homeroom. His name was Marty Cohen. That week he helped me with a science project. After class, I told him that I owed him one. He replied, one, more like three. The beast kept pushing Marty, calling him a Jew pussy. Marty fired back, calling the beast a jerk off in some kind of Jewish term, a dumb goy. The beast knocked Marty down to the ground. Marty kept trying to get up, but the beast kept knocking him down. Another kid brought over a stick with a piece of dog shit on it. They were going to put it in Marty's mouth. As I watched, I kept thinking back how my father bullied my mother, and how one time a neighborhood bully like the Beast did the same thing to me. It was on a Halloween night. I was 10 years old. I started trick-or-treating early, and by 9 o'clock I had two full bags of candy. I was on my way home when suddenly, from out of nowhere, an older kid from the neighborhood ran up behind me, grabbed the two bags from my hands. In a flash, all of my candy was gone. When I tried to get it back from him, he knocked me down and then rubbed a piece of candy in my face. I was scared and cried all the way home. I knew I couldn't go home empty-handed with tears in my eyes. The old man would have killed me. He could have cared less about the candy, but not fighting back was unheard of. Bad news travels fast in the old neighborhood, and before I made it up our street, my father was on his way down. He took me back to the corner where the bully and his friends hung out. They were busy dividing my candy up among themselves. When they saw my old man, they immediately froze in their tracks. I pointed out the jerk who took my candy. I thought that my father intended to straighten him out. Instead, he made me fight the bully right then and there on the corner. I was scared, but had no choice. My father would have beaten me a lot worse than the bully. It's sad to say, but like I said before, fighting was the only thing my father ever taught me. And he taught me good. He wanted his son to be the next heavyweight champ of the world. That night, it paid off. Before the bully could even raise his hands, I hit him with a straight left jab, followed by a short right to his breadbasket. He lost his breath and fell to his knees. Finish him off, my father demanded. I looked at him. Do it, he said. I didn't want to hit him while he was down, but I felt I had no choice. I stood there with my fists clenched. Then I let loose with rights and lefts to his face. Blood was everywhere. I looked at my father and he was quite satisfied. I'm thinking he should only know how many times I would have liked to do the same to him. By now, the beast was holding Marty down on the ground. They were just about to put the dog shit in his mouth, but I had seen enough. I pushed the beast off Marty, got on top of him, and started punching him in the face. He screamed for me to get off as blood ran from his nose and mouth. 
Before I let him get up, I said, If you ever pick on another Jew, I'll kill you. The rest of his gang couldn't believe it. The beast was dead and a new kingpin had emerged. As the beast limped away, Marty picked up the stick with the dog shit and shoved it in his face. Before we went our separate ways that day, Marty reminded me that our score was almost settled for that science project he helped me with. This kid had balls. I just saved his ass and now he's telling me that we're almost even. As he was walking away, he hollered back, you're all right for a goy. I wasn't exactly sure what he meant, but I found out later it was short for goya, meaning non-Jew. After that day, school wasn't quite the same. A new gang had emerged, half Jews and half Gentiles. We called ourselves the League of Nations. Nobody fucked with us. Marty was the brains of our gang and I was the muscle. He was a thief and con artist, able to get his hands on anything from blank report cards to early dismissal slips. He only had to see a parent's signature once before he had it down to perfection. He gave me my first nickname, the Goy. In return, I named him the Jew. His nickname lasted only a day or two, as you can imagine. The Goy has stuck with me for a long time.